Today, I will be instructing you through a blind coffee tasting, also known as a cupping. To do so, I've chosen five beans from four different coffee companies, Maxwell's House, Level Ground Trading, Kicking Horse, and Discovery Coffee. Besides all of the beans coming from different countries of origin, they also differ in their production methods and their symbolic and material qualities. Symbolic quality is the perceived value of something through its symbolic attributes. In the case of coffee, we often rely on symbolic markers such as fair trade, bird friendly, and organic to determine the quality of our bean. In the case of a company like Level Ground Trading, we trust that because they are an ethical company, the beans are of a high quality. I could bore you with the details and complexities of the international commodities market, or I could just say, hey, look, this burlap bag of beans has fair trade stamped on it. <laughs> That's good, <laughs> right? Sure. Material quality, on the other hand, refers to the physical aspects of the actual bean that gives its value, including its flavor profile, its unique terroir, and the way in which it's produced. Over the past few decades, there's been an increased emphasis in the material quality of the coffee bean, which has given rise to a whole new avenue of artisanal coffee connoisseurs and micro-roasters. I'm interested in these differing approaches to coffee, and I'm curious about how their associated values affect my coffee drinking experience. For the blind tasting, you're going to need your beans, a cup of water, a kettle, a grinder, a scale, I didn't have one, but we're trying our best, a timer, cupping bowls with wide brims, and a large spoon. Step one, weigh out your beans to 12 grams. Step two, grind your beans. In official cuppings, beans are ground to a coarse consistency, so I use the French press setting instead of a finer setting like the Turkish grind. Step 3. Smell the beans dry and note down any of the aromas you can distinguish such as fruitiness, sweetness, boldness, etc. I was referring to the Specialty Coffee Association's cupping sheet for this tasting, which is similar to the W set sheet used in wine tasting. We were having troubles coming up with descriptors, so we found a tasting wheel to help us out because we're beginners. Next, you take your hot water, make sure it's not boiling, and pour it slowly over your beans, being sure to saturate them as evenly as possible. Once you've done that, set a timer for four minutes. During this time, the water should release a whole new set of aromas from the bean. Once the timer goes off, smell them again, stirring the coffee three times and then pushing the coffee grounds back with your spoon. I forgot to stir. At this time, the quality of each bean became more apparent to me. The first two seemed to have a lot of complexity in their aromas, whereas the other three seemed a lot more one-dimensional. After documenting all the aromas that come to mind, you can move on to step six tasting the coffee. The technique for this is to hold the spoon up and aggressively slurp the coffee so that its particles hit every part of your tongue. You should continue tasting each one over a span of time as the bean's flavor profile changes as it cools down. When describing the flavors, remember that taste is subjective. There are no right or wrong answers, just better and worse ones. To conclude, I've found that the two beans with the highest symbolic quality, Kicking Horse and Level Ground Trading, were really dark, to the point of smelling almost burnt, which seemed to mask any other flavors. The two beans with the highest material quality were roasted a lot lighter and it was easier to detect specific aromas. Finally, Maxwell's house, which isn't known to have high symbolic or material quality, was pretty terrible in the tasting. There's not much more to say about that. Interestingly, the complexity of the bean translated directly into how much information was given on the actual bean. On the one end, Maxwell's house doesn't even list the bean's country of origin, whereas Discovery Coffee lists everything down to the exact farm the bean comes from. For me, this raises questions about whether an increased emphasis on the material quality of the bean affects not only its flavor, but the livelihoods of the people producing the bean.